Hey guys, welcome to the studios here at uh, Center Target Firearms and Indoor Range. I'm Brett, this is Bobby. Hey guys. And Bobby, you know, times have changed since we were kids. Yes, they have. We look at different things, uh, we'll look at everything differently now mm -hmm. than we did then. And one of the things is uh, we feel safe going to work. Yes. We feel safe uh, doing different activities out and about, going to grocery stores and so forth. We feel safe at church, but we do have a problem with that sometimes. We let our guard That's down. Fact. That's fact. Yet church security, you know, it's one of the things that uh, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, yeah. I, something I didn't even think about because even the, the you know, that was always, that was sacred. I mean, sure. everybody yeah. was sacred, even the bad guys, you know, kind of kind of viewed that as a as a sacred ground and wouldn't do anything there. But, you know, nowadays uh, churches are being targeted as uh, as as potential places for, for people to make a statement. And, and a lot of times it's because they're considered a soft target. Yes. Uh, and and the expectation of, of meeting resistance there a lot of times is low. But yes, it's uh, it's now become a, 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 a very necessary thing. And, you know, we go to church expecting to be safe, of course. Right. And you, you you do let your guard down, and you're in a big crowd. Uh, but over the past, and we've been blessed around this area not having this problem. Uh, we've had some scares here or there. Right. But for, for the most part, uh, you you hear about things in California. Of course, the shooting in Texas mm -hmm. and, and the California a couple of weeks ago in the churches. But um, you don't expect it to happen at your church, and it very well can. Right. You know, even here in London, Kentucky, and a lot of we, we started a thread uh, from local churches, and, and, and now it's expanded to other states, and we start getting pretty much real-time information yes. whenever a church experiences some kind of an issue. And just over the past few months, there have been people show up at churches with one locally. Yes. Uh, with yes. a gas mask on. Yes. A guy shows up with a gas mask, sticks his head in, and then leaves, I think. Yeah. Their letters, uh, very, uh, very uh, threatening in nature. Uh, a lot of people, the transients, j just hanging out at the church. They're asking for monies and different things. Had a guy show up at a local church saying he was Jesus um, and saying he was, in fact, armed with a knife, with guns. But, you know, these are issues. And, and now with the, uh, you know, I know shortly during Mother's Day, there was a concern that there would be people showing up to churches to make statements yes. based on the Roe versus Wade decision that came down the pike. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent uh, that 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 people, the folks are going to have to and are upping the game as far as security is concerned with churches. Yeah, and and there's a there's a big why reason why why we do that, and uh, you know, it gets back to say you know a lot of people don't agree with it. People do agree with it, but bottom line is to be safe. And, and you know, church is no different than being at home. You let your guard down at home. Absolutely. Um, and church is home's a sacred place. Right. Church is a sacred place, and you feel safe. But anymore, you have to be protected, and you have to watch out. And it's not it's not very difficult to do to get no, no, you a small not. group of, of people. Absolutely. And uh, you you are spe you especially you know more about this. Well, you, and it's, it's like I tell people, you you got to be able to self sustain. And you talked about the why. You know, the why is a lot of because it's a, it's viewed as a soft target, and there are also legal reasons to do it. You know, again, back in the day, you couldn't have I, you. To say that you were going to sue a church would have been just beyond yeah. the realm of, oh, yeah. of, of, of comprehension. Now, if you go to Google, you can look this up. Lawyers that sue churches. That is their calling card. Some of the, some of the folks, lawyers sue churches. And why is that? Because a lot of times they know that there's a lot of issues that could take place at church that the church body, the church board, those folks that kind of govern that have not prepared for. And, you know, I, I get a lot of this, uh, well, you know, we've got a police officer that hangs out outside in the parking lot, and uh, we don't need that church security because we got a, we got a, we got a police officer that hangs out there, so we got everything under control. But if you've never really put or understood, and we talk about this with schools, too, you've got to be able to self-sustain. If you've never really figured out how long 30 seconds to a minute is. It's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. So if you had a police officer stationed outside the church and you had church going on, to think that he or she could respond in less than 30 seconds from the time they heard what they thought was gunfire, and it's a common thing for people to go into denial and think it was anything but a gunshot. Yeah. In other words, it's like, okay, was that a, was that a car backfired? Was that, was that, it's what was that other than? 
And then by the time they confirm it, we're looking at 30 seconds. So before we go any further, Joe's on the camera right now. Joe, when I when I come in, I'm gonna simulate that I've come in the church here and I'm a I'm a I'm a church shooter. Yeah. I'm gonna go bang, bang, bang. When I say bang, 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 you start the clock. You let me know when 30 seconds is over. And there's that's with one sitting in the parking lot. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I walk into church, bang, bang, bang. You started the clock. Yes, Joe? Okay, here I go. Bang, bang, bang. How far is it to the nursery? I'm going to go to the nursery. Yes. All right, I'm walking down in there. Bang, bang, Sunday school room. Bang, bang. Uh, I'm, I'm still in there. Yeah. I'm reloading. I'm yeah. still doing my thing. You know, police officer or, or whomever's out front's coming or hunting for me. Hopefully they're coming. Bang, bang. And Here a lot we go. of these churches yeah, yeah. Are, are, are we? Do we large. have tourniquets? There's a lot of people that have been shot. Okay, Joe, just give me the thumbs up. That's 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds, yeah. So we got to be able to, self, to self-sustain. So do we know? Now, when we start talking about self-sustaining, I'm not talking about just a group of, of, of good old boys that, you know, I've got my, I've got my gun, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, because there's so much more to it than that, as 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 the folks know. You know, they, there's got to be training with regard to that. There's got to be some discipline as to when to and when not to shoot. Uh, there has to be an understanding of ballistics, what a a shot in a particular area will or will not do. Sure. You know, you, rarely are you going to have the lux the luxury. I, I, may not be the best term, but you know that you mentioned the the shooting in Texas. It was a 15-yard shot, I think, that ultimately ended up taking care of the problem, but it was a clear backdrop. The way yes. everything had sort of evolved, there was a clear backdrop to it. You know, the, in, in a church setting, a school setting, those kind of things, there's a high likelihood there's not going to be that clear backdrop. That's now, true. hopefully everybody will get down, but in chaos, some are going to get down, some are going to run, and, and for the bad guy to be on the outer portion of that, you know, that's a, that's a luxury you may not have. So a lot of... This goes back to just like law enforcement or anything else, making sure that there's a plan in place to select the right people. Yes. And then to provide training because they can be a more just as much or more of a liability to have a security team as to not. You know, I know police departments that have SWAT teams or TAC teams yeah. only because they got a t shirt and a cool pair of sunglasses, you know, and, and some cool weaponry, yeah. but they're far from what I would classify as as an asset, yeah. you know, I would classify some as a liability, not all, obviously, but the, the same way with church security. Just having a group of guys that are good hunters or the good whatever that don't have those other components, yeah. we're running into some potential problems legally, morally and ethically, first and foremost. Yes. We'll talk about the legal aspect, but I firmly believe the moral and ethical aspect of it. You do morally and ethically the right thing, the court of public opinion, the court of law, and all those things you know, works out. Sure. 30 seconds, long time. It is a long time, and you know, when you're when you're going to uh, when you're training a, a security team, mm-hmm. I, my opinion is I think that everybody who volunteers, I think they should be vetted and right. find out if they're if they're. And I don't want to say this in a bad way, but uh, the mental side of it is there. One hundred percent. The skills there. Mm-hmm. You can't fold the pressure because right. you know you. Be an ex-police officer, you know you can't fold the pressure. No, and and you know, the, and and we're not going to get into the Evolve issue. We're not yes. going to get into all those different things. But if you are in the capacity of protecting the congregation, yes. or protecting a school, or protecting whatever it is, there isn't there are inherent risks that you assume. You have to realize that there's a high likelihood you potentially could get hurt. Yes, and I consider myself a good shooter. But there are more scenarios that I can think of than not where I wouldn't be able to fire a shot until un- and unless I was almost at point blank range in these scenarios. Therefore, you're probably going to get shot at some, you know. Yeah. So th- there's there's risk associated with it, but there's that mindset that one must have, but also an understanding of what what a, ballistics, an understanding of what the human body does, your own as well as others when things happen. And, uh, you know, that we carry on the training, not just the firearms and the ballistic side of the house, but also the uh, the TAC med side of the house. Are these people capable? I mentioned 30 seconds earlier. Sure. You know, there was a lot of people shot in that yeah, simulated yeah, yeah. time. Do we know and possess the skills and equipment to be able to stop the bleed? Do we know how to work with and deal with those kind of things as well? So there's a lot more components to it 
than just the, and there's a lot more areas of church security, which we'll talk about later, other than just the active shooter. Now, that's the yes. one that stands out yes. the most. But, you know, as you know, there's a lot of different things we got to, uh, we got to, we got to concern yeah. ourselves with that. Oh, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more than you realize when you sit down and think about it. And I've got a lot of friends who are pastors. Right. I got a lot of friends that are police officers. That's either good or bad. I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, but you know, I I know that some of my friends, you know, nowadays they have concerns about that. They try to put yeah. it in the back of their mind, but they do have concerns. It, it's there and it's not going away. So the best way to deal with it, in my opinion, you know, if I got a problem, my best way of dealing with it is just what's the worst case scenario. Let me plan for yeah. that, and then everything else is going to be, sure, be sure. good. And it may not be the best way. But that's kind of the way I like to uh, to go about it. You know, with churches, it's different too. If you said, Bobby, you got all the resources you want, uh, secure the Pentagon or secure this particular area, sure. and I don't care what you do. Yeah, I would I would lock every door except for the the front one. I'd have five or six exactly. guys out there with ARs. I'd have uh, you know radar going around the building. I'd have early warning. I'd have all these different things. I'd strip search people before they came in the church. Uh, wouldn't have nobody go to church there. Yeah, well, but probably it'd be, not. It'd be, it'd be secure. So with this, you know, how do we do it? How do we make ourselves a hard target but do it with a yeah. soft heart? And that's the trick. You know, are we, are we, you see so many churches, and this is kind of the way, I, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves, and school's the same way, and I know I keep relaying to that because I see a lot of likenesses between the oh, two. Oh, sure. But, Typically what happens at a church, you'll have somebody will show up Sunday morning, an elder or somebody there, they'll unlock every door on the structure and yes. go make a, cup of, a pot of coffee. Yes. And then for the next hour or so, they have nobody has any idea whether there's a bad guy in the place, in the bathroom, in the girl's bathroom, in the boy, whomever or whatever is in there. And they haven't vetted anybody that's coming there. They don't know whether they're armed or whether they're sure. not armed, all those different things. If they do confront somebody or see somebody that looks out of place, they normally stand off at a distance and are completely reactive in nature, as opposed to something as simple as, you know what, we're keeping every door in this place locked except for the one you're going to, and you can egress out of them all for That's fire right. reasons, but you can only get in this one way. Or if we got two openings, we got people on them. You're not going to get by unless we can lay eyes on you. Yes. And then when you do come through that door, and I don't want to get into all the details of our of, of the training and all those things, but I, I want to, uh, I want you to know that, you know, I'm, hey, how you doing? Good to see yeah, you, Brad. Yeah. It's nice to meet you, man. Where are you from? I'm vetting you as you yes, come in. Yes, that's a big thing. Get to know them. You yeah. know, if you see somebody, and it could be nine times out of ten, it's going to be somebody that's coming to visit your church Absolutely. and just coming to, to, or maybe just took a whim and say, hey, this mm -hmm. is a Sunday I want to come to church. And they may not uh, dress the, the best right. or anything like that, but you're right. Get to know them. Yeah. Get, find out. You know, yeah, absolutely. A, a couple of questions can uh, make a big difference. Yeah. And I don't want to be across the room if something happens either. I yeah. want to know. And, and, you know, if I walk you in and I'm paying you that much attention yeah. to walk you in, show you where to sit and all those things, I want you thinking, you know what? And, because one of two things. Either it's loving a bunch of people in the world, which or what yeah, you think sure. if you're there for the right reason. Sure. If you're not there for the right reason, more often than not, you're going to be like, I don't like all this attention. There's I'm leaving. Up here. Yeah, I'm leaving. Because the last thing in the world I'd want to do is, is run somebody off that, that wanted to be there for the right reason. Exactly. But I also got to protect this 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 congregation and make sure that, you know, if, if I have to sit, if I'm concerned, I'm going to sit right here beside of you real close to you. There you go. The whole yeah. time. You know, I pat on your back. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll do whatever. We're just neighbors for that period of time. Sure. As opposed to that more... We were still reactive to some degree, but, but the 100% reactive, which I, I, I hate because you're reacting, you're, you're usually behind the power curve, especially if we're across the room. Now, I get, I've got backlash. We, you know, we talked about this off camera, but, you know, I've gotten backlash for even talking about church security. I've had people say, you know, we don't need church security. The Lord will take care of us, and I'm definitely not going to get into a debate on, no, on, no, on no, no, any no. of that. That's not what we're here I think for. that, yeah, I, in that my mind, the Lord takes care of me, but I also <laughs> think he has an expectation that I lock the door at the house, sure. you know, and I have some preparation to keep my family safe, and I've had people say, you're spewing hate by talking about having a security team, and, you know, this has nothing to do with hate. The, 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 the sheepdog, not to get too cliche-ish, but the, the sheepdog does what the sheepdog does not because it hates the wolf, but because it loves the sheep. That's it. 
Warriors do what warriors do because they are fighting for something they love as opposed to something they hate. I've seen hate in fights, and hate loses most more often than not, or it breaks. I've never seen love break. No. I've seen his little mama rabbit. We've talked about that fighting a cobra because of the protector little one. Nowhere near the skills it would take to be able to deal with that, but man, I'll fight to the death. To the, a lot of times, <laughs> the, uh, the the snake will just give up and say, "You know what? I don't want any more of this." So it's not about that. This is a ministry now. Yes, it's a ministry to where uh, it's it's safety and security for those folks that go to church there. We also talked about you know it's not just shooting or it's not just an active shooter or somebody that would come in and do that. It's also you know, medical. How many people do you have going to your church that 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 are older that could potentially uh, have a seizure, have a heart attack, have yes. a stroke? How planned are we for that? You know, the kids in the uh, in the Sunday school, the kids in uh, in the nursery. Do those folks that are assigned to them, do they know how to do CPR? Do they know how to to uh, deliver, do, do the Heimlich maneuver? Do they know how to do age-specific sure. CPR? Are they physically capable of protecting that child from somebody coming down the hallway? I teach a class, uh, and and I, one guy said, you know, really don't, really don't, our pastor wanted us to come, but I really don't know, you know, I, I'm going to go around the room asking people different questions about this, that, and the other, and I don't, really don't know why we're here, and uh, you know, I just can't think of a scenario where we would need to be, where we need to have security. We got this place good to go. I said, well, five, I'll, I'll do a hypothetical. Ten minutes after church starts, you got, you're singing, you're preaching, whatever is going on at your church, 10 to 15 minutes, whenever everybody's occupied, whatever yes. that time is. How hard would it be to move, for me to walk through the door, go down to wherever your nursery is, get a child, walk back out to my car, and drive off? Is there somebody along that way that would stop me? Could stop me? Not just let's let's just not say could let, or would. Let's say could stop me. Is that person in that nursery capable of stopping me? Is there some calm communication back and forth with somebody that could come to them? You know, and I saw the blank stare. And from that point on, it was like, okay, yeah, we we might need to. Okay, well, what if we put a guy out here? All kind of hypotheticals. We sure. And granted, we can't come up with something for everything, but we can come up with something better than nothing. Yeah. In a lot of cases, it's nothing other than hoping for the best. And hoping for the best, you know, a, a, a wish or a hope without a plan to get there is, uh, you know, I, I, it's not much. So. Uh, and, you know, we, we're talking about uh, people think church security active shooters, but it's not so much m- more as an active shooter as it is uh, church security in whole, mm-hmm. because you just brought up a scenario of uh, kidnapping, right. and that's a big yeah. thing. Medical, medical Absolutely. is a big thing because that's something you need all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but church security is uh, something that, unfortunately, we we need nowadays. A lost child, a lost yeah, child. Are yes. there things going on off campus? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, is there or are there? Um, Here's another scenario, just to which we're rolling out scenarios. Let's say it's dark. You know, in the winter months, it's usually dark when evening service is over. Sure. What if a twenty-one-year-old Mary with her one-year-old infant, two-year-old infant, they leave church early and they go to their vehicle, and I'm out there standing at the vehicle and I say, "No, you're going with me. You're getting the vehicle with me, or whatever." What mechanism is in place? to prevent that from happening, or at least notify somebody. Yeah. Or is there somebody that walks her out if she leaves early after dark? Criminal mischief. One of the, uh, or, or, or robbery, burglaries, I should say. Uh, there, was a, there was a string of thefts, not just in the in southeastern part of the United States, but all over the United States, where the M.O. of the bad guy, bad guys, was to see what time church started, wait 10 to 15 minutes after church started, and then just start walking the parking lot seeing whose doors were unlocked and seeing what goodies they could get out of the vehicle. Exactly. Because they knew everybody would be occupied inside. Yeah. And uh, not a lot of monitoring of the uh, of that. Now, you know, we and folks will say, well, we don't have the money to do this, and we don't have – it doesn't take a lot of money to do this. I mean, if you got radios, that's great. Uh, you got to have personnel, and you got to have the right personnel. Yes. 
but if the, if if this is something that a, that a that a a church is wanting to look at, they need to select somebody, they being the pastor or the board, whomever, to be the chief or whatever you want to be, the security director yeah. of that, and then start filling in the gaps as they go, and then look at what you'd want for the criteria for those folks that are uh, that are part of the security team, and. Um, you know, and, and, and train accordingly. Talk about, look at these different things that are going on throughout the country. And uh doesn't have to be a SWAT team, doesn't have to be a TAC team, doesn't have yeah. to be anything. But if you can't self-sustain, you've seen how many people were lost in 30, 30 seconds. Yeah. And you you don't realize when you, when you did that how long 30 seconds is. Right. And God forbid it's a minute because it's just, it just you really don't think about it until you're putting right. a scenario like that. Right. And, you know, three minutes, I think, we, we were just talking, even if the police officer was in close proximity to the yeah. church, by the time that it was acknowledged that there was something going on at the church, 911 was called, dispatcher related to the telecommunicator, related to the officer, the officer responded, and then that's assuming he or she would run immediately in and get directly exactly. to whoever that bad guy was. You know, three minutes is like, Almost full. That's almost like beyond the realm of how how fast that would be because I don't think it'd be that quick, even if it was in in you know close real close proximity. And th imagine three minutes. I mean, thirty seconds versus three minutes. And the response and and God bless us. We have we're lucky to have a, a great law enforcement Absolutely. in this in this community, Absolutely. state police, sheriff's office, city mm -hmm. police, and so forth. But it's going to take time for them to respond too. It so is. it's gonna it's, it's going to be a while. And you know. You're right. You have to have the right people in there. Get them vetted. Get them trained. Um, come up here and, and practice the range and yeah. ask questions. Well, and and, and at Center Target, one of the things we have here is we have a uh, we have a church security class yes. that we do. Phase one. Phase one's about two hours. Phase one's about two hours in length, and it, uh, it it's it's lecture only, and it talks yeah. about these different strategies and different things. No charge for it. Phase two. Phase one's being a prerequisite, but after you've been through phase one, phase two is forty nine dollars, but lasts about three to four hours. With it, they have a all the attendees or students have a use of force, physical and deadly force class. Yes. They uh, have to qualify with their handgun on the basic or the uh, the minimum standard that a police officer in the state of Kentucky would have to shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they also are exposed to the TI simulator, which is basically a big video game that. Is yes. used by state police, League of Cities, a lot of different uh, uh, London uh, Department of Criminal Justice training, uh, London City, or all those folks use that, which gives you those scenario-based uh, situations where some are use of deadly force, some are use of physical force, some are discussion, some is you know a lot of different variables. Yes. And the student is is assessed in how he or she uh, reacts to that, and even though there's one person doing it couple of different scenarios everybody else is watching until it comes your turn so yes. even though one person will only actively get directly get a couple scenarios they get everybody gets however many if there's 10 people yeah. in the class and everybody gets three they get 30 because they're actually getting to watch those and a lot of times it's uh we work through a lot of a lot of problems there but it's a good you know that's a good starting spot uh regardless of you know and i know there's a lot of other uh Places I, I, I see all sorts of places on the um, on the internet. You know, I know uh, I think Sheepdog and a lot of different folks have have training for church security. But you know, the same the concept is the same. Yeah. You got to have you you, you got to have a you got to have a uh, uh, the right people. You got to have some equipment, and you got to have some training. Yes. And when you get that, uh, you 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 you've got a plan, and it doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be SEAL Team Six. Uh, but it also can't just be a bunch of guys that just have some guns. You know, and, and every gun under the sun, you know, I've yeah. seen um, everything from uh, high point three eighties uh, by church security team members to uh, Desert Eagle fifty uh, eighties. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's got to. <laughs> and, you know, talking about I, I've been in the simulator. Dan mm -hmm. took me in there a few years back. And one thing about Center Target is the training, the classes. They have all. They have the facility to do this. And Bobby, you've been here forever, seems like. And it's just like you know, the guys here are trained 
and you guys, uh, you know, your your former life, right. and then your training you have now, and so forth. It makes a big difference. But, you know, in, in, in the TI simulator, the beauty of the simulator is it's on the heels of the discussions regarding use of physical force yes. and use of deadly force. So, and it's not a matter of you did this wrong or you did yeah. that wrong. It's a matter of you did what you did, articulate to me or explain to us, and we're going to simulate that these other group is a jury. Yeah. Why did you do what you yeah. did? And if there's mistakes to be made, that's the time to make it and correct it. And I've had guys call up months later and say, man, I've still got that one scenario on my mind, yeah. and I'm so glad I did that because I would never make that mistake yeah. if yeah. it was a, uh, you know, if it was an actual scenario now. Now I wouldn't make it. So, and, that, and that's, you know, at the end of the that's day. What that's, that's what training's about. That's what training's about. I want them to make mistakes in sure. training. If you go through training, I don't care what it is, and you never make a mistake, and you never, one, you wouldn't push hard enough. Uh, exactly. You wouldn't face with enough uh, different scenarios, or you're just way too. We need to evolve to something. <laughs> something sure, new yeah. For whomever that yeah. is. So. <laughs> we need to change. But uh, yeah. this, so Center Target, of course, uh, we, we offer these classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting back after the COVID break, kind of getting back to yep. normal for a change. Yeah, we got them running right now, hot and heavy, and and with with all the stuff that's going on in the uh, in the world, you know, we we've got a lot of a lot of uh, security teams yeah. that have that have taken our advice. They've got they got policy and procedure. Sure. They've got uh, you know they got a, a an organizational chart, chain of command. They're trained their guys, uh, the folks on CPR on. Uh, 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 firearms, defensive tactics, uh, TAC med, all these different topics. And um, a lot of times the only expense they've got is other than, you know, a little bit for training sure. is they've got uh, some expense for some little bit of tourniquet equipment, uh, ammunition. You know, that if, if they do it right, they're going to ensure that there's – we don't have this dis big great deal of the disparity in weaponry and, and ammunition. You know, I've seen people with uh, – I've got some tracer rounds here I'm going to run, yeah. and I've – you know – Got to be some consistency with regard to that. All right, Bobby, this has been a fun topic yeah. to talk about. It's been interesting, but different, God, different. When it, Joe, Joe, uh, Joe said, "Yo, I, 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 let's let's talk, let's talk church security." And, and, yeah, I, that's all awesome. right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I love discussions like this because I learn a lot from you guys, and it, uh, you know, and I know you guys out there can too. So if you're interested. Uh, contact Center Target about a church security class and find out when their classes run. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys here are great. They'll they'll teach you and uh, get you in a class. And um, best training facility I've ever seen right here, uh, top top notch. So come on by and check them out because they have range membership mm -hmm. uh, memberships here, and it's uh, training is key for this. And um, Bobby, you train all the time on different things. <laughs> you're you're busier than <laughs> yeah. I am, and I don't train on anything. Uh, but come on by and see the gang here at Center Target Firearms and Indoor Range. Uh, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Check it out. They're here to help you, uh, fix you up with uh, firearms you need, equipment you need, and the training you need. So come on and see them. And by the way, Bobby, if they, if they can't watch this, uh, check out our podcast. Yeah, uh, you can absolutely. hear this whole thing on podcasts as well. Yeah, and... and Regardless of where you are, and, and I tell people this all the time too, is you don't have to, you don't have the money to do this. Yeah. If you've got, if you can buy staccatos and you can buy Daniel Defenses and you can buy the high tech radios and night vision yeah. and all that, that's great. Yeah. But you don't have to do that. No. Sometimes it's just have a plan. And plan. And, 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 and some, some, some decent uh, equipment, which doesn't cost a whole lot. Plans mean a lot. Plan, man, I got to have a plan. And the, the right personnel, and, uh, <laughs> yes, and the right you know, personnel. you gotta, you gotta have that. I mean, yeah. you know, um, you may think that you have it up here, but when you do oh, the training, you may not. And right. You'll find out. You'll find out a lot about yourself mm -hmm. in any class you take, whether it's a rifle class or a handgun class or a self defense class. Anything, you'll find out a lot about I got yourself. One thing I gotta say yeah. before we leave, and I know that people's like maybe be like, oh gosh, but this is <laughs> this is pretty good. We uh, something else we have to concern ourselves yeah. with. We. Had, and talking about church security is uh, you, your church security guys aren't going to be the only ones in the, in the church with a gun more than likely too. That's true. And uh, we got a little lady that goes to our church. I won't mention her name, but she's uh, she's in her eighties. Uh, she carries a uh, uh, revolver, wheel gun. It's about an eight inch barrel on it. And I'd be shocked if she can, <laughs> without thumb cocking it with both wow. thumbs, whether she can cock it or not. But a lot of times she'll come into church, she'll come to the security desk, and she'll lift that purse up. And Mom set it on the desk and say, "Don't worry about nothing, boys. I got you today. If anything happens, 
I God mean, bless everybody her. Everybody remember where she's at. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, know where she's at. So she's going to be thumb cocking it. I, if I ever visit your church, I'm going to sit next yeah, to I, her. I don't know. Where, we, got, we, got, we, we know where exactly where she's at. So, guys, thank you so much. Like and subscribe for the video. This was a, sort of a long one today, but yeah. it's important. Uh, times are changing. Times have uh, changed over the past few years. And we just want you safe. It's not about yep. locking you up, no. locking you in a church, or making you feel like that you're a prisoner. It's about safety. We, you know, it's all about taking care of the congregation and keeping the bad things out of the church, and so you can enjoy your worship. But uh, Bobby, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate We've been you, good. Man. I, yeah, I always yeah. appreciate yeah, coming always, here and seeing you. Always like to see. You Missed you over the past little while, but <sighs> we'll be back with you next week. And uh, you're we'll, selling houses. Man. Well, I'm selling houses. <laughs> I'm doing the morning radio thing, so we're just really busy. And Bobby's right. doing. Uh, he does everything, so uh, <laughs> makes me look bad on the range too. So. Come on by and check out Center Target Firearms and Indoor Range. Check out their membership. Check out their gift cards. Check out everything they have here for you. And specifically, check out all their training classes, whether it's concealed carry, church security, or anything special that they have going on here. So we'll see you next time. See you guys.